Hey everybody, Sam here. It's been quite some time since I've gone over waiting on stabilizers. In other words, end weights and how to set them up in a way that will be most beneficial to your shooting towards the overall stabilization and control of your bow. Regardless of whether your focus is target archery or bow hunting or some combination of those two, weighting of your stabilizers is a very crucial uh, aspect of obtaining the best performance you can from the bow. It's important that you, that you take the time to go through the process. And I often say this to people in phone calls that I have or in other videos that I've done, I've, I've, I've touched on this. But it's important that you go through a process of examining what you're getting from your bow. What is the feedback that you're getting with the current setup that you have? And then process of elimination, working through what will contribute to better accuracy, better overall performance um, with respect to what it is you want to achieve from your bow. So working through the process of adjusting the weights is a very critical factor. Weighting plays a great, um, uh, it, it plays a big role. It takes a, a, a level of great importance in adjusting exactly, precisely how the bow comes to hold on target, how quickly you can get the pin on target, how much you may or may not have to fight the pin dropping, for example. Um, what drives a lot of the, of the content that I put into my videos is my own personal shooting, where I might be in my own evolution with a particular bow or what I'm seeing just in general with my shooting. And that happens to be the case with this bow. Uh, throughout the past year, I've shot this for various purposes, 3D, hunting, just overall field uh, target type work. Uh, long range shooting and I've gone through a number of evolutions in how the bow is set up. The uh, length of the stabilizers has stayed fairly consistent but the weights and where they're positioned and how much I use has changed. So here, here's the something you should really take seriously and take away from this video is that you shouldn't have a predetermined idea on, on how these weights will be set up. And you should also be open-minded to the, to the fact that you may find the need to make changes throughout the course of a, of a period of time or, or, or the course of a year, perhaps. You may, as I have, go, on, go through a number of evolutions. I'm always seeking what is best. And what is exactly best at a particular time can vary to some degree. Now, let's clarify. That doesn't mean that you're going to go from, say, for example, uh, using maybe a one, say, between one and three ounces on your front stabilizer to using between five and six or six and seven. It's unlikely you'll jump that much, especially with your front stabilizer, but it is possible that you will see significant jumps on your side stabilizer. So let it be known that, that my view is that the side stabilizer plays a much bigger role overall, especially with my particular brand of shooting and my style of shooting. It plays a bigger role in obtaining bow control and bow accuracy than the front stabilizer does. If I had to choose between using just one stabilizer, front or side, I would use the side. Might sound odd, but that's the truth. I often get the question from people, how do I know how to set the weights up? Well, I'm holding here Hybrid Pro. This is going to be a 12 inch bar. And I want to point out something. So you get the stabilizer from us. Here's a 10 inch bar. It's loaded now with 10 ounces. Uh, you get this bar from us. It comes with three ounces of weights. Now you, I don't know if you can see, probably you can see if I hold it like this. But you can see that this 12 inch bar with three ounces when put in alignment with the 10 inch bar isn't much longer. 
Uh, just gives you an idea how much length weights can add to your overall stabilizer. But they come with three ounces, and people assume that because it comes with three ounces, I think oftentimes they believe, well, that's what, it's in, that's what the intent is. You must use it with the three ounces. You get the best performance from that, or um, you know, any variation of that line of thinking, people often will, will have that. And, and that's not the case. They're not sent with three ounces because that is precisely what we expect them to be used with. That's so that you have flexibility to make adjustments, and that is because it often uh, is found to be the amount that typically people will want to run on their front bar, two, three. In many cases, people will. So it gives you the ability to go for, say, one to three ounces on the front stabilizer. But when it comes to your side stabilizer, now that's a whole different matter. So what, I, what you have here, what you see here, is what I found recently to be showing me that this can alleviate one of the, the issues that I found with my own shooting that I don't want and I want to eliminate. And that is fighting to some extent, not a lot, but for me, if I even see the smallest amount of it, it's a problem. Fighting that small amount of front pin dip below the target. I want to be able to get on the target quickly, so the weighting has to be set up so that I can get it to full draw, get to anchor, settle in quickly. But not just settle in quickly, stay there and not have to fight the bow's tendency to want to dip below. Some people may fight the tendency to be able to not have the pin rise, and they can't seem to get it to come down on target. Uh, there are a variety of things people may, may struggle with, and there's a lot of reasons behind why those things exist. But, but you can counteract it very effectively with the appropriate amount of weight, the correct angle. I found that the more downward you can bring your angle and still keep it practical for your, your intended purpose, the better. And you may want to swing that bar out. This all goes to say that you must work through the experimentation process and you must do a good bit of shooting. So what you see here is 10 ounces on the side you see now there's one ounce on the front. You might be one of those people I've talked to. And say, wait a minute. You might be saying, wait a minute, hold on. Didn't you say it's a good place to start from, say, one to two ratio? A one to two ratio, meaning if you had, say, three ounces on the front, you would have six on the side. That would be a one to two ratio. If you had two, you would have four. You're at a one to ten ratio. I am. And I've slowly progressed towards that uh, because I've seen the increased benefit of continuing to stack the weights on the side, keep that bar angle out a sufficient amount, not have it tight into the bow like you often see with people. For me, this has worked. And drop eventually down to just the one ounce on the front because this is actually producing exactly what I want it to. And that is draw, anchor, sink down on the target and stay at that spot. Whereas in the past, I would find I was slightly below where I really wanted to be. So then it was a matter of bringing it back and perhaps fighting, getting a little a bit of additional unnecessary tension throughout the body where I don't really want it. Perhaps trying to fight a little. Maybe my grip is changing. And also, too, I think it's affecting my release. Because then I'm trying to anticipate when the pin is going to come back to where I want it to be. And it doesn't have to be off by much for it to impact overall accuracy. So, so that's what I'm seeing, and that's what I want to encourage people to look at. You may be one of those people who has never really thought deeply at all about waiting on a stabilizer. Maybe you're one of those people who just throws the stabilizer on, whatever it came with. You assume that's what the company uh, has tested to be the best for everyone out there, or, or most people out there, and, and you use it. But I'm asking you to go beyond that, to think about what you can accomplish with uh, looking at those details, looking at those changes, and re recognizing that yes, it's designed with the ability to change, and yes, TAP is suggesting that you should explore through all the possibilities. So this bow shoots extremely well. My standard for what, it, for what it should do for me is high. I hope that you guys have a similar standard for your own shooting and that you do expect a lot and you do ask a lot and you do want these products to deliver for you because we know they can. We know they will. 
they have for hundreds upon hundreds of people, in fact, thousands of people now, are seeing those benefits, reaping those rewards. Go to our website, titaniumarcheproducts.com. Take a look at everything we have there. If there's not sufficient information for you, reach out. We'll answer your question. We'll get you set up. Thanks, everybody. Stay tapped out.